Howdy all of you delicious people, I am here today to talk about two werewolf movies. I'm not here to just talk about them because it's like, oh, well, like, American werewolf, and oh, American werewolf, oh, I gotta, I gotta talk about two American, no, I don't care about that. Uh, I just really wanted to desperately talk about this because I love werewolf movies. I always love the werewolf movies where it's a guy in a suit, not in those garbage CGI like werewolf movies they they try to attempt later and it didn't go all that well. Even though in within this movie, because budget, um, they went the CGI route and manned it. You could really obviously tell the CGI. You could taste the CGI in this movie if you could really honestly and truly do that kind of thing. Like, this one, like, really, obviously, like, you could really tell, like, okay, here's a CGI coming in. <laughs> but I thought it was a good attempt for them trying to do something different. So, let's ultimately, yeah, like, there are so many werewolf movies that at the end of the day I wanted, I want to talk about and get into. But I think that you you would have to start out at the most iconic werewolf movie of all time, and an Amer and an an American werewolf in London, like basically the most iconic werewolf movie, the the overall thing everyone looks at as transformational werewolf is that movie right there kind of like it kind of bridges the gap of like when you look at a transformational movie this is like the blueprint so going into this we and and weirdly enough the same people that did the the effects um brick baker or rick rick breaker rick brick baker the the guy that does the effects in this movie ultimately had done uh Michael Jackson's thriller. He had ultimately done uh the Delicio Bel Toro's Wolfman, uh where ultimately he like eventually just kind of really eventually retired after that because it was just like, nah. You know, I'm just kinda done with <laughs> with working and, and like I just don't want to do these projects anymore. But yeah. An American Werewolf in London, really, like, it's one of those very iconic werewolf movies, and I can't go into other werewolf movies without talking about this one. Because uh, immediately I was just going to go, hey, maybe I should just re review American Werewolf in Paris again, because ultimately at some point I was like, like, you know what, like, I want to talk about this movie, but then I realized in, my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, can't do that without talking about this. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's that time now. Ultimately, if there's other werewolf movies that you want me to get into, I'm sure there's like Howlings and kind of other stuff that I, I think there's like Bat Moon and uh, some other kind of things. Uh, Silver. Uh, the the Silver Bullet, I think Stephen King movie. Gary Busey. Uh, it's been a while. I've seen that one. But uh, I'm sure there's a lot of um, other, like, if people want me to talk about, I know, like, Wolf Cop, a lot of people could jokingly uh, ask me to do that. I've seen Wolf Cop. Uh, I know there's a, even a sequel Wolf Cop called Another Wolf Cop. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've seen kind of a barrage or I've heard some things or I've, I've seen some stuff. Uh, ultimately, there's there might be some Underworld fans out there uh, that ultimately, uh, have like those. Uh, but I think that's when they started to try to call worlds like lichens and stuff like that. And I don't know. I don't think that whole lycanthrope thing really like went with anybody. People are just like, no, <laughs> like call them werewolves. It's been werewolves forever. Um, they always throw out that lycanthrope thing and it never really stuck. So, um, it's always werewolf. So anyways, let's get into reviewing An American Werewolf in London. 
ultimately, I'm kind of quasi confused if I should really have a cryptic like sense of this movie. It's been out for for decades, and plus, at some point, people have had to have at least heard something about this at some point or known something about it. So, like, I think people might know American Werewolf in London, but maybe might not be aware of Amer of American Werewolf in Paris. But let's go into the cryptic like sense anyways. So again, I would say for this movie that this movie is so iconic that it's a good film, but to actually watch it beyond the transformation part and beyond like um, David's kind of um, kind of discussions with Jack in this movie. There's a lot of there's a lot of great things going on in this movie, especially for the time. But like there's something about it where like this movie overall, like to me, probably now like doesn't hold up or like the ending is just kind of like that's how it ends kind of thing. Like that's how it ends. Like that's kind of how I felt the movie like what the movie does to me is like that's how it ends kind of thing. And it just kind of just, like, goes off to just, like, bah! <laughs> like, so. We ultimately, I, I think I'll kind of, like, teed up here. We ultimately have, like, I'll kind of give people a tee up. Because people have probably heard this movie at some point. Um, and again, it's kind of bizarre for me to go in a cryptic-like sense about a heavily iconic movie that people have yeah so we get these backpackers that ultimately decide like it seems like they have like a million dollars to their name so they can just backpack through everywhere um they can just pick up wherever they left off and just kind of just go backpacking through anywhere so these guys are just kind of traveling and it seems like they're just kind of like uh, via their via their just spontaneity. It seems like they're they're thinking about the next kind of uh, travels that they're going into, and so eventually they travel into a very bizarre town with a very bizarre bar. Going into that, they eventually. Uh, realize that they have pretty much stuck their they probably had pissed had picked <laughs> picked the worst location to tour uh the worst location to uh kind of really uh not only the worst time at night but them trying to find the worst location to travel through and all the while just kind of backpacking. And that leads them into a horrific accident, which pushes the rest of the story to them trying to understand, like, like trying to understand what had happened past that point and for them to understand how to like is David since this moment is he crazy and that's whatever what's that's what a lot of people are trying to understand is he crazy but then eventually we get towards the end of the movie and it's just like, no, he's not crazy. <laughs> he's not crazy. And definitely um, there is some kind of outdated like a, a wolf attacks that are kind of going in this movie. And there's some kind of like 
interesting camera work kind of going on to try to showcase this this world fit points but god again you gotta give it up for a lot of the stuff that they do in this film because it's freaking amazing at some points there's a lot of like interesting dream sequences that i thought were just really fun to watch there is a lot of just really um visually interesting things going on in this movie and then once you get to that real true transformation scene it's like yeah this transformation scene if anything still holds up to be a great effect going on in this movie i don't care if like if if people are just like yeah this movie doesn't hold up at all it's garbage no, the transformation scene is still the best scene in this movie. And then everything else is, like, just, like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But the transformation scene is still the best thing going on in either werewolf movies or horror films still to this day. So anyways, I think now is about that time to really go into this movie in non-spoiler-like sense. Because reasonably... Even though Jack supposedly has a very brief moment in this movie, it Jack still lingers on. Um, and here is my here is my thought process about Jack. Uh, when we get into spoilers, I think my process on like Jack, I just don't quite. I just don't quite yet understand because reasonably uh, something does not really make sense to me. But I guess we're just led to believe that that maybe the the purpose of Jack uh, ties into the the spirit of. I'll I'll have to I'll have to break that down and I can't do it in I can't do it in cryptic I have to do it in spoiler because um because I don't really understand Jack I don't understand how Jack still works in this movie uh via like I hope people understand it in spoilers so we're gonna have to get into that because I I yeah we're gonna have to get into that so let's go into spoiler territory because again. This movie's fairly old, so let's go into spoiler time. Spoiler time, it's about the time we can do spoil this movie. Oh, wait a minute. Ultimately, if you don't want spoilers of an American Werewolf in London and you want to find some place to see it, you can be completely avoided of spoilers because ultimately you can fast forward to the point where I shift camera and eventually you can start there and get a cryptic-like sense on American Werewolf in Paris and then ultimately you can otherwise decide where you want to have uh both of this but yeah so let's talk about an american werewolf in london with spoilers so we ultimately have two guys that are backpacking and ultimately they are coming out of a a sheep truck and ultimately one of the kids mentioned that a sheep crapped on his backpack. So Jack and David, they're both walking, um, kind of walk, walking, they're backpacking. They're mentioning about like all the places that they're going to go and stuff like that, or how, where they have been and this and that kind of mentioning how thoroughly these people travel around the world and this and that. So we, get these two characters to eventually go into this bar called the slaughtered lamb. And like, funny enough, they're just like, yeah, this is like the worst bar ever. And immediately when they go into this bar, they're like desperately like asking, it's like, you know what? I'm starving. Like, do you guys, like, what do you guys like have? Do you have like any kind of like, do you have any juice? Do you have any like, like water yeah like and the woman's like no all we have is like all we have is like booze and so ultimately 
uh, immediately she comes down to consensus of like, well, I can get you tea in me, and she gives him tea. So eventually, one of the guys points out the 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 five pointed star, and basically the guy Jack mentions is like, well, hey, maybe they're uh, maybe the owners or maybe. Uh, no, wait, David mentions is like, well, hey, maybe one of the the owners is from Texas, and the other guy mentions it's like, well, hey, yeah, maybe they're uh, big fans of Remember the Alamo, and kind of the other uh, other veteran like uh, guys otherwise uh, picks up on, hey, Remember the Alamo, and so ultimately. A guy goes into this thorough story about uh, them kind of uh, mocking up uh, the remembering the Alamo, thinking that these guys are really going to care about him uh, kind of um, mocking an American or whatever because they don't really care. They don't have any real true skin in the game because they travel all over the world. So eventually they... They laugh it all off with all the guys, and then eventually Jack uh, points at the five-pointed star, and he's like, hey, why do you guys have that five-pointed star there? And there's ultimately a guy that is throwing darts that actually misses, and he is like, hey, like, I was throwing darts, and you... You made me miss at darts. I haven't missed at darts in I don't know how long. <laughs> Why does this have to be a huge thing? So you missed at darts. Who cares? But anyways. So. They are just like, okay. Like, evidently we've just ticked people off. So. They're just like, hey, uh, can we order? Can we get the tab? It's like we're gonna upset all these people, and so like we should probably just get out of here. Uh, so ultimately, uh, one of the guys say, hey, before you go, it's like make sure you guys stick to the road, and yeah, just kind of like uh, watch yourselves out there. So. The guys are, like, starting to walk away as quickly as they can from the bar. Um, like, making, like, pop shots about the bar and how, like, how garbage it was and how basically it's, like, uh, they were going to go to some other uh, bar that was called, like, the Duck something or something like that. <laughs> like, the Quacking Duck or something like that. So... They, they go and they start, they continue to just keep walking and like rain starts pouring on them and they walk even harder. And so eventually while they're walking, um, all of a sudden, like the people in the bar are hearing a howling and immediately the woman is like, Hey, like do you guys hear that? And they're like, no, I didn't hear anything because ultimately they know full well what that howling is. And the woman is like, you know what? We need to go and grab those guys because it's the right thing to do. Like, they don't know about this and we do. So this woman is really pressing these guys more and more and more, more and more to go and get the get those two guys before they go too far Um out there because they don't know what's going on so we have it to where these guys are just uh consistently walking and they don't know where like they keep just keep traveling in one direction and reasonably eventually they start hearing a howling as well and they're like well hey like i think we'll still be fine because supposedly the guy told us to uh stay on the road and to just kind of like this and that. And so immediately they realize that they are no longer on a road. And like that howling is like consistently like consistent. And so you're like, and so they're like, you know what? How about we 
go back to that slaughter lamb. Like, you know what? Maybe we can just, like, maybe we can just, like, really make some headway with those guys. And just, you know, and, but the problem is they don't know which direction they ended up, they ended up coming from. So they end up starting to get lost and it ends up that the howling ends up consistently coming to the point where they think the howling is ahead of them when they're trying to go back to the to the slaughtered lamb so eventually they decide to just kind of uh, go another direction and they're like let's just go here it's just so eventually these guys are trying to like walk away from from whatever they're hearing and it gets to a point to where Jack gets jumped by the quote unquote werewolf and this thing is just flat thrashing in front of him like it doesn't really look like he's really like eating him or alive or whatever it looks like he's just kind of like thrashing him and Jack's like, oh my god, he's got me. <laughs> like, he's attacking me. And he's eating me. And so, then eventually, the the uh, the werewolf goes and almost attacks David. And sure, fire enough, the, the villagers ultimately come and shoot this thing down. And so David is still alive, but is kind of like watching this naked man all bloodied up and everything like that. And he's like, what the heck is that? And then he eventually just conks out. He wakes up in this hospital and is told that his wounds were pre- uh, taken care of before he even got to that hospital. It's like, okay, what the F is going on? And so immediately the... Immediately, like, he's going to this hospital and he's trying to tell him the story that he was attacked by an animal. And so this nurse is trying to get David to eat um, but David is very grief stricken by the loss of his friend and Jack. So, uh, the nurse is trying to get him to eat. And so ultimately she, she like forces him to try to eat uh, so that way she can give him medication because she has rules that she's like, well, I can't give you this medication unless you eat, so I'm gonna like force you to eat, and like this is where we're gonna kind of get the get the the love interest of David. So we we have it to where okay, so David is starting to have these really like wild like dreams, and to where ultimately he is um. He's home with his family, just kind of having, like, a really uh, fun night. And then all of a sudden, like, a gang of, like, military-ish, like, werewolves come knocking at his door, breaking through his home, and, like, killing his entire family, and then trying to kill him. And then he wakes up and realizes it's all the dream. And then Nurse comes through, and she's like, oh, hey, David. And then eventually the werewolf comes, like, colliding through... Um, the, the military werewolf comes colliding through and killing the nurse and is going to kill him. And then he wakes up. I'm like, what is this dream sequence stuff going on? But it's to ultimately make it so that David doesn't realize whether he's awake or not. And so eventually when Jack reappears to David... And ultimately starts telling him, it's like, hey, uh, yeah, hey, look, I'm dead. Like, you can see, like, all all my body parts and, like, all of this and all my meat and potatoes. Because, yeah, that, um, that werewolf uh, took out my heart. Here's my problem that I have with Jack being here. 
in this movie. I'm like, wait a minute. So the werewolf guy ha that had killed Jack is dead. Why is Jack still there? He has no... He has no... Unresolved business. Because the guy who had killed him is dead. But then also my thought process is, well... Maybe every single person that has ever been killed by a werewolf has to, like, see every single ghost of any werewolf that had been past killed by, um, by the spirit of that werewolf. So when this spirit transformation, like, from werewolf to werewolf... Like, the whole, like, uh, lycanthrope-like transformation between from one person to another, I guess. Uh, this person has to then carry the last uh, person that that last werewolf had killed to usher in to help the new werewolf tell them, Oh, hey, um, like, you need to kill yourself, David, because ultimately you're going to turn into a werewolf. Like, and kind of tell him the rules and tell him what's going on and tell him, hey, the full moon, it's going to happen to you. To help him understand, like, okay, what's going on? And this, uh, this decomposing, like, presence is to more and more scare him or to frighten him into trying to figure out a way to prevent him from killing others or to push him into very much um, doing himself in or coming up with some way to try and fight all this. So, David ends up uh, with this nurse. And all the while he keeps dreaming, eventually uh, the some doctor goes in to see David and bizarrely, <laughs> bizarrely, like, eventually, like, David is, like, talking that he keeps seeing all these bizarre streams and that supposedly people are telling him that he can be a werewolf and this and that in his dreams. It's everything's all so weird to where our doctor goes out of his way to eventually find the slaughtered lamb and ultimately tries and very much does his like own investigation like he's a cop <laughs> and tries to make the consensus of what had happened to David as if like these guys at the slaughtered lamb told him some like a uh, horror story about people turning into werewolves. And so that is that story with the loss of his friend is going to turn David crazy. And David is going to think that he's a werewolf, but and go on killing rampages and killing people. That's ultimately what the doctor kind of comes back and tells the tells the nurse hey like do you remember this 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 david patient that you're watching over of and she's like oh yeah he's at my house he's like oh is he it's like what's the number to your house like i need to contact this david because like this guy like he can be a real true like like there's something i think mentally wrong with him because there's a lot of times where he's like he's grabbing the nurse and kissing her and like telling her the truth about everything that he think he might think that he might be crazy and so but ultimately he's in love with her. And like those are so much interesting moments 
we're ultimately we're kind of seeing David at some points having nightmares and him like uh, ultimately being uh, in his nightmare taking being treated by this nurse in a forest somewhere and David is supposedly transforming into a werewolf or this weird looking ash like monster and but then he like wakes up or whatever so a lot of kind of random bag of stuff that I'm talking about here but anyways um we have it to where eventually a really long day where David is just kind of like, you know what, like, what am I going to do today? Uh, he ultimately looks in the fridge and he's like, you know what, I'm not hungry. Uh, he goes back in the fridge and he's like, yeah, I'm still not hungry. So David is just kind of like putzing around, looking and reading books and just like, it's like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do today? So eventually... While reading a book, all of a sudden, like, David, like, grabs his head. He's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Just a very odd transitional way of, like, transforming. But he's like, oh, my God. And then he starts, like, ripping his shirt off. And, like, he's like, I'm burning up. <laughs> he, like, pulls down his pants and like and here's where like david starts like his hand end up like stretching out and he's like ah and it's like oh it's like and freaking like he's yelling out that he's like jack i'm so sorry it's like and then he's like oh and his freaking like face freaking like pushes out he's like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's like it gets to the point where we have to like transform the legs and he has to flip back over and this and that and yeah so we have like uh, david as a werewolf like attacking people in the neighborhood like it seems like somebody was gonna come over for like to meet uh like it was gonna be some couple meeting some couple, but this couple was completely eaten by this werewolf before they were to come into this person's house. And I thought that I was like, oh my, oh my god. So eventually, we also get the probably most uh, iconic scene, which is actually. Uh, the subway, where ultimately the guy is just kind of do 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 going through the subway, and then all of a sudden he realizes that there's a werewolf in this subway, and so he ultimately notices this thing appear in the subway, and of course most of this is shot from the perspective of the werewolf so we don't actually see the werewolf uh for most of it we get to kind of see him appear here and there mostly some kind of face stuff for most of the point uh until the very end of the movie where we get to see the werewolf I, a little bit more uh most of the time we get to see mostly the head of the werewolf or like the very like most of the point we get to mostly just see the uh like the front body of it and that's about it so going into this we have the the chase in the subway where the guy is like running from the werewolf we're seeing like this very interesting subway station um but then we ultimately eventually see this guy like he's running and running and running and it seems like he's already like running out of gas to the point to where when he uh, gets the escalator thinking that he's going to be okay because the escalator is kind of doing the, the the moving for him. But the, were the werewolf is also, like, getting closer and closer up the escalator as well to where this guy is just kind of, like, laying there, I guess, just exhausted to where the werewolf, I guess, is just going to eat him uh, on this escalator. So 
it eventually gets to the point where David goes into a a a very much adult theater, I guess, to because he ultimately needs to talk to Jack, and I guess no one is gonna poke at this guy uh, for talking to himself in a adult theater. So. This movie's going on. We have adult content going on in this theater because it's an adult content theater. So Jack is ultimately talking, or David is talking to Jack, and they're having a conversation. And Jack is immediately pointing him to every single person that David has killed so far in this movie to where all these people are telling them, Hey, I had a life. Hey, I had things going on and you killed me. Like you should take your own life, David, or turn yourself in. And so, but a lot of people are telling him to like to do himself in because ultimately, so that way they can have their, their post life release. And so, like, I'm immediately thinking, like, okay, like, if this werewolf goes and kills, like, a million people, is he just going to have a million souls all following him around? Like, and what's weird is, like, all of these spirits that are following him, following him around are consistently decomposing and so I'm like, okay, this doesn't quite make sense to me. So are they going to be with him till a certain point of time? Or where? What is the, what is the kind of approach to all this? So eventually we have it to where the doctor is trying to figure out where David is. Uh, because ultimately he realizes it's another full moon out. And that David might be crazy enough to start killing people again during a full moon. Instead of actually becoming a werewolf, he might just be a person that might think that everywhere, uh, every full moon he has to go and kill people. And so, eventually we get it to where David turns, but he turns in a much more public like environment we see this awesome freaking like awesome shot of like david the werewolf the werewolf just kind of going through this entire area in london and like buses are getting stopped like and you're just seeing all these people running from the werewolf and like, to the aspect of, like, there's just tons and tons of people all crazily running around, and the werewolf is trying to get people, grab people, and kill people. It's freaking awesome. To the point to where... At some point, they say in the movie... That... David is really coming to the point of consensus of trying to think... That, yeah, he should stop this whole werewolf business. And he remembers the original werewolf movie that he brings up. The the black and white one. Um, where they bring up what happens in that movie. And then he mentions to this nurse that it's like, well, hey, like... Ultimately, if... Someone is going to have to take... Is someone is going to have to take somebody down who's a werewolf... It has to be via the person that loves them. So, I guess if really David is going to transform and think he's a werewolf, which he actually is, uh, like he wants to go out the movie way. So, eventually we have this crazy like scene going on where buses are being stopped uh traffic is just like going crazy because this werewolf and you just see a ton of people just all running from this werewolf 
and it's pandemonium at its best. And so eventually it seems that they uh, had cornered this werewolf and eventually are going to start firing away at it. And the nurse starts running to try to find David uh, or what she thinks is David and David going to uh, have been crazily killing people. But no, it's a legitimate werewolf. So the nurse crazily is running to try and find David because ultimately the mission is to like, okay, there's a crazy thing going on the news about like uh, a, a werewolf on the loose. So she goes to try to find him and, and the nurse ultimately goes to this werewolf and she is trying to go like David, like David, they're going to come in, they're going to come shoot you. It's like David, like she's trying to reason with it. She's trying to reason. She's trying to reason with this with this werewolf, and I'm like, "What?" It's like, you know what? This thing killed a bunch of people. It's gonna probably kill a lot more. Um, so, if anything, they eventually kill David, and I'm just like, "That's how this movie just ends." Like, the movie just kind of just ends, and you're just like, ah, what? The movie just kind of ends that way. Um, it kind of ends on a whimper. Like, I don't remember this movie. I didn't remember how this movie ended. Um, so when looking back, and I'm like, oh, that's how this movie ends? Like, it's like, what? Um, but sure, fire enough. Yeah, uh, Werewolf dies at the end of all this. Uh, not a happy ending for David. Uh, because of course he's a werewolf. Like what? Are, what are they gonna like? Go okay for this werewolf. We'll let you. We'll let you off the hook. No, um, David dies at the end. Well, technically the werewolf does, but it is what it is. Moving on. All right. Cryptic like sense for uh, American Werewolf in Paris. Uh, this movie isn't uh, with a main character called David, no. In this movie, we very much have a main character called Andy, I believe. Andy and Seraphine, a girl's name that we can't really quite pronounce all that well, but it is what it is. Um, kind of talking about this in a very cryptic-like sense, but again, kind of teeing people up to understand this movie. Uh, this movie really does not hold up just be, well, it's, it doesn't hold up just because it really feels like a movie for that time. It's funny to look at and make fun of, um, because really it's kind of a very, uh, weird and or wild werewolf movie that again is like to the movie of that time. But then anything after that is kind of to look at it in a very goofy like manner or to make fun of it just because it's kind of like, it really, really doesn't hold up. It really holds up very much worse than American Werewolf in London. Um, like, at least American Werewolf in London, you can actually uh, buy the uh, the love interest story. You can really buy David because he does such a, the, the actor that does the role of David and plus Jack, like, they're just, the, that those two are just the greatest performance and then you get a very attractive nurse woman um, as well in that movie. So American Werewolf in Paris. We ultimately have these guys that are these extremist guys. Uh, again, these quasi like backpackers um, and they want to go and do these like extreme like stunts. Uh, ultimately, they want to skydive off of any kind of very hugely popular monumentous things but also they are people that want to accumulate these points uh points to do the most extreme and interesting like things and so 
Anyways, we have Andy with these guys, Brad, I think, and Chris. I could be wrong about that. I probably am sure I know I'm wrong about it, but I'm maybe ballparking somewhere in the, in the vicinity, maybe. Um, and so reasonably, they end up wanting to skydive off the uh, off a of Paris monument, the the uh, the tower monument, the I want to call it the Eiffel Tower, sure. Yeah, because I don't know sh about... Sh anyways, we have these characters that are just kind of wanting to do this stream stunt, and bizarrely, like, it seems like anybody can just go into the Eiffel Tower, evidently. And so, we also have a girl named Surfing who is also jumping off the Eiffel Tower because ultimately... She is just needing to do this for, ultimately we find out later, good, solid reasons. So, we eventually have a skydiving-ish like person wanting to save this girl, but then eventually doing a lot of absurd-like things towards after that, uh, and then eventually re ultimately meeting this girl ultimately leading to eventually us getting into finding out that this guy is eventually going to turn into a werewolf and then surfing is going to have to surf him out and need to keep him um, because he is the new werewolf. And so ultimately there's a whole like Werewolf drug in this movie. There is a, um, there isn't much new going on in this film as far as like approaches and stuff like that. Um, but there is a very much interesting like, and I don't think the like our new werewolf character really very much like kills a ton of people either. It kind of goes into they're very much being like okay, like the. There's a whole, like, werewolf, like, clan of people that are killing a ton of people by doing their sketchy ash like, um, night parties. And so that becomes a big thing in this movie. So, let's break down into spoiler territory about this movie, because at the end of the day, then we can say that we had saw this film. Very, fairly interesting movie, but again, really a movie that doesn't, uh... It really doesn't hold up, and then it comes off as, like, a, a movie that is, like, very comical, very goofy, and a movie that I could not uh, really at all take seriously. I was like, man, this is such an odd film when looking at it now. Um, I was like, man, this movie doesn't, like... I don't think it like takes it at all seriously. I think it's almost like a joke, even if it even if it seems like it's a serious film. I don't think it quite takes anything seriously enough. I think so. Let's break into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about time again to spoil this movie. Like I I don't think that this is a like. I think that this might almost go on to be like quasi a bad film. Uh, I think for a lot of people that have probably either seen either one of these movies, like, I think, like, there's just kind of, like, a, a, a reserve to just kind of say that these movies are, like, for their time, like, quasi math. But ultimately, again, these movies might just be, like, one of those where, like, a, like, we're all from London, like, still holds up just because it's, like, it's the measuring stick of transformation movies and where this movie, it doesn't hold up at all because it's just kind of tapering off the fact that the fact of the success of, um, of this movie, but it kind of goes into a very oddball like approach that ultimately is just like, there's some interesting stuff that it does in this movie, but overall it's just a, just a weird <laughs> approach to, two movies so 
let's go into talking about this. So, the beginning of this movie, we have a doctor that is running away from a werewolf in this, like, like he's, he's running away and ultimately desperately asking for someone to help him. But sadly enough, this werewolf, like grabs his legs but it seems like at some point the doctor was able to eventually seemingly uh get away unscathed because ultimately this doctor is in this uh this uh this section down below where he's like kept alive by by tubes and stuff like that so we eventually have the uh we eventually have our main character who is uh, this extremist, and he's with Brad and Chris. He's ultimately making this, like, point system bet. And so they're going to the Eiffel Tower. They meet Seraphine, and Seraphine is eventually, like, leaving a, uh, a note, and she's going to jump. Uh, the boy ends up saving her, uh, dropping her, um, and taking her shoe, and eventually he accidentally clunks his head to end up in some hospital. And so ultimately, his very first mission is to find Seraphine. Well, it seems like he accidentally meet, sees her again in the hospital. And he's like, hey, I have your shoe. <laughs> it's like so stupid. And... He gets clonked on the head and ultimately the girl uh, runs off because um, she had stolen hearts. And the doctor goes, hey, did you see that girl? He's, she stole my heart. It's like such a stupid, goofy thing to say. So eventually we have it to where they are supposedly going to track down this girl via the note that she lost. So they're scavenging, they're scavenging all over the, all over everywhere to find this note that she had left. So they do. So eventually they find her and they, excuse me, they go to her address. Ultimately, they find out that she red on her hands. So. Ultimately, our main character assumes that, uh, oh my god, she's trying to end herself again. She's She has uh, blood on her hands. And so, eventually, he knocks the door again. She comes out, and he's like, do you have blood on your hands? And she's like, no, it's paint. And so, eventually, he pushes to where, ultimately, he's asking her. It's like, well, hey, how about we help you paint? And she's like... No, 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 no. Like, how about, like, if anything, like, uh, how about we go on a date? Like, how about X day? Like, I will, like, oh, go out with you and this and that. He's like, okay, fine. So we eventually have it to where uh, all the boys meet this guy. I think his name is Claude. And Claude is a guy that evidently loves Americans. And so... He's saying, hey, like, how about we all, like, how about you all go to this, like, Luna, Lunar, Luna something party and ultimately tell them that I sent you. So these guys all decide, hey, yeah, this sounds like amazing, right? So they all go to this party. Uh, and so they all go there. And so... It seems like everyone at this party is all American. So basically we have Chris who ultimately goes to try and meet uh, Seraphine because he uh, wants to, to kind of like check up on her and eventually... He finds that she is locked herself up. And so all lo locking herself up, he doesn't really quite understand why uh, she's doing this. But um, 
he's ultimately telling telling her that hey, like, uh, Brad and, and Andy are at this party, and like, I just wanted to kind of like get you uh, get you to this party as well if you aren't already there or you weren't already going to be there. So we eventually find out that uh, Chris is going to help uh or surfing is gonna go okay i'll i'll help i'll go to this party and all the meanwhile chris is gonna be locked up down uh down below and so eventually while chris is trying to escape from this excursion he eventually finds out that um the guy uh, down there is who's being taken care of as a werewolf as well, but he has no legs. So, Seraphine makes her way to this party and eventually is telling the doorman to let her in. And he's like, you know what, I don't think I'll let you in. And she's like, well, hey, do you want me to just stay out here and just uh, have a good conversation with you? And he's like, no. So he pushes her in there and uh, locks the door. Seraphine scrambles to find Andy and Brad, and she's like, hey, we need to leave. We need to leave now. So, all the while, Andy and Brad are just kind of like, hey, yeah, this party's really popping off. Hey, maybe we should <laughs> maybe we should hang out a little bit, and, like, maybe we shouldn't leave. And Seraphine is like, no, you have to leave. And so... Slowly but surely, we are starting to see uh, some of the werewolves starting to change and have already changed. And Seraphine is also starting to change as well. So, immediately we have a werewolf that is attacking Brad and killing Brad. So, Seraphine is... Um, is staying in one part of this um, this facility and telling Andy to run. And he's like, well, what are you doing? What's going on? Hey, what should I do? <laughs> She's like, run! <laughs> and so he's like, okay, I guess I'm running now. <laughs> so he is running and he doesn't really quite understand what's going on, but then eventually he sees this this animal and he can probably get the idea that it's like oh crap so what ends up happening is he ends up running uh from this werewolf and he ends up like driving a uh a metal thing through it but this uh same animal attacks him and yeah so We eventually have to where, okay, this guy eventually files a report about all this stuff kind of going on with the police and stuff like that. So it seems that the police are tailing him and kind of watching his every movement. Um, because ultimately he was kind of left at that whole attacking thing uh and, like, sent to the hospital to be, like, watched over and, and this and that. So, uh, or he kind of filed a report about what had happened. So, we eventually have Andy who wakes up at uh, Seraphine's home. And basically, she is throwing herself at him to keep him in this, uh, in this house of hers. Um, and basically convincing him that he needs to uh, drink this juice and that basically he's going to be a werewolf and like telling him all the rules and everything like that. And he's like, yeah, I'm starting to have these weird, bizarre, like uh, these dreams or whatever. And she's like, oh, so yeah, like that is a lot of stuff that is just kind of kicking in. If anything, they're kind of rushing through this whole werewolf thing like fairly quickly. So we 
like as if it like it doesn't really matter. It's just like, oh yeah, you're doing the werewolf thing. Good for you. And so eventually we have it to where Seraphine is talking to her mother. And Andy is just like, oh, well, hey, <laughs> Seraphine's mom. Hey, great. Are you going to introduce me to her? And and the mom's like, oh, no, like I like I really don't think that we that um, we should actually see one another. And then Andy's like, well, Seraphine, didn't you tell me that your mother is dead? And so eventually he looks in, into a mirror and realizes that she's a corpse that's decomposing. He's like, oh my god! And so eventually, like, Seraphine is trying to explain that's like, hey, you're a werewolf and now you're going to start to see some dead uh, corpses lying up. So, uh, yeah, if anything, you're going to start seeing some ghosts. And so eventually the mother reappears again and scares the crap out of Andy to where he runs through this window. Um, to ultimately, he is just running from this house because, like, he's just like, God, this is crazy. Um, and even at some point in between uh, these moments, there is also the point of which that they go... Um, Seraphine and Andy do go on this date and ultimately the guys are giving him all like rubbers and stuff like that for the, the date. And so he goes on to this dinner date and he accidentally like, uh, tries to blow his nose and all these like rubbers come out of his freaking pocket. And so he has to convince her that it's, oh, it's chewing gum. And ultimately she forces him to blow a bubble for him. And uh, let's just say the bubble gum uh, flies out of his mouth and eventually uh, lands him in almost having a fight where uh, Seraphine almost ends up beating up some guy uh, for Andy. So eventually we get to where uh, Andy is very much... Uh, like he's going and trying to find the rarest stakes. Uh, he's eventually uh, getting a big whiff out of a woman coming into the room. And so immediately. Uh, Andy is just having a big old scent to this woman. And so he goes up and accidentally bumps right into her. And. I mean, he's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry that I bumped into you. And then she's like, oh, you're an American? And he's like, yeah, I'm American. It's like, oh, great. It's great, to, <laughs> it's great to see another American. So they get off really easy. And he's like, well, hey, do you want to just eat something? And so he is bizarrely eating and mentioning, like, her, like, her scent and everything like that. And... Basically, it seems like both of them are getting very, very drunk. And to where eventually, once their food comes, uh, the food opens. And that is when uh, Andy sees Brad for the first time. And he's like, oh, my God, like, I thought you were dead. And he's like, I am dead. And so eventually, <laughs> eventually, Andy goes into the bathroom and at some point you see that you just see this scenario of just Andy talking to himself uh, to where he's like going into a, a bathroom stall and talking about like, yeah, I thought you were dead. And, and I think the police thought that you were dead too, but it looks like he's talking to his own Schwantz or his Johnson. Uh, but anyway, so, uh, so this is where we get Brad that is convincingly telling him, yeah, you're going to start seeing a lot of dead people lining up of people that, that you will at, point, at this point kill. It's like lock yourself up or like do yourself in, Andy. Uh, but Brad has his own agenda. He wants uh, Andy to kill the guy that did him in so he can have his 
his uh, he could have his um, moment of moving on. Because that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, wait, Jack didn't easily move on, but, like, Brad is stuck there? I'm kind of like, what? So... So, Brad is is kind of telling him kind of the rules and stuff like that of, like, what to expect, kind of getting him geared and prepped to, prepped to be like, okay, you're going to see some things. You're going to do some stuff. So, eventually, um, Andy takes this woman and goes to seemingly this grave site for reasons that I don't understand. And they eventually start uh, having adult content with one another. Uh, they really start uh, graving it up, if you know what I mean. And so Andy starts to transform. And the woman is just like, oh my god, you are really, really hot. And so it gets to the point to where Andy just jumps off of her and runs into the nearest place that has a big batch of water. And seemingly while he's transforming. And so he runs into this batch of water, I guess, to really not have to show too much uh, like creature facial changing or whatever. So... This girl is just like, well, okay, like, like, where is this guy? And so eventually there is this side detective that is repetitiously following them. If it's not blatantly obvious where he eventually is staring at them both and some toy goes off. And so he takes the toy and, and steals it. And the guy's running after him like, hey, whoa, whoa, buddy. So... Eventually, this partner is is following him to this uh, to this uh, graveyard, and so eventually we find this werewolf eventually going after this girl, and she notices this and eventually is like, okay, well, I'm gonna spray my scent all over. Uh, this graveyard, so this werewolf is going to confuse and maybe try to track me into these um, these places, and that's how I can, like, get out. But eventually, the werewolf tracks her down and kills her. And then eventually, the, uh, the detective who tries to, like, follow the guy ends up getting attacked by the werewolf as well, and seemingly also so does this dog, to where... It ends up that um, when Andy awakes the next day, he is butt naked right next to this dog. And so eventually the, the detectives are grabbing him and arresting him because it's like, and he's like, hey, what, what all did I do? And he's like, yeah, what did you all do? Like, we're still trying to come up with all the, the crimes of which you committed. And so, eventually within this movie, we eventually come up with a consensus of, okay, like, Seraphine's father was trying to come up with some, like, cure for being werewolves that eventually Claude had found out that there's some drug to force the change of said werewolves. And so, eventually, it gets to the point to where Chris ends up getting kidnapped by the other werewolf guys. Uh, and so, eventually, it gets to the aspect where um, Andy goes and tries to save his friend and then is at this big elaborate party um, with all these cops being there 
um, to try to uh, solve this whole thing. And Andy is also kind of handcuffed to one of the police officers. And yeah, is trying to um, solve this whole case. So, excuse me. We eventually get it to where ultimately Andy is starting to grab a gun from one of the police officers and eventually starting to shoot uh, some of the werewolf characters uh, and ends up shooting one of the werewolf characters to set Brad free. And so ultimately Seraphine uh, is, gets to a point where eventually she gets hurt. And so eventually Seraphine looks to Andy and he's like, you should just kill me so that way you can feel free because we're not exactly sure who exactly uh, made Andy, but eventually we'll figure it out. So we eventually have Claude and Andy kind of battling it out in this subway. Because, yeah, uh, Claude had, uh, Claude was still taking injections. So he was attacking people in this subway and starting to kill people in the subway. But then eventually he turned back to normal. And so eventually Andy and Claude are fighting in the subway and eventually... Andy finds out that Claude was the one that turned him into a werewolf. And so, ultimately, they're fighting with this needle to take another werewolf injection. And Andy ends up falling on the needle of the injection and he ends up turning. And so, Claude is running away and Andy jumps on him quasi shifting into a werewolf and eating Claude's heart out. All the while, Seraphine is eventually uh, taking some ambulance and the he, she's talking as if she loves the, the driver and or loves the, the, the paramedic that's in the car. And he's like, yeah, you know what I am? I'm like... Like, I, I did take some some classes here and there and whatever. And she's like, okay, whatever. Uh, so anyways. We have it to where all of this kind of eventually just kind of concludes. And everybody seems to uh, be all happy. I'm sure there's a lot of huge points of story which I'm kind of skipping around or whatever. Um... Not much, uh, but really it's just kind of quickly eventually getting there. So we eventually find these two eventually seem to have uh, are getting married. And before they get married, they're going to skydive. And so what ends up happening is, is that... Uh, Andy was going to give the ring to Surfing, but the, the ring falls, and so ultimately they go and die for the ring. Uh, immediately, the problem was in the original, or in the early part of this film, is that um, the guy who jumped off the Eiffel Tower, he didn't tie off at the end, so the guys had to grab the rope and try to save him. And so in this one... One of the people didn't tie off, so eventually one grabbed or was hugging the other and luckily grabbing onto the other because the line wasn't tied. So that's how, like, the reasonably at the very end of this happens because uh, the person wasn't quick enough to grab the rope, but luckily the person was hugging onto that person, so they were fine. So, um,. That's how the movie just kind of just ends. And at the end of it all, like, it's kind of like overall not a very 
like kind of great ending but overall just not a really great movie it's kind of really looking back on it now it's like severely clunky it's a very clunky movie and it's a very weird uh werewolf movie when looking back on it it's not a really great uh werewolf movie but uh ultimately i decided i decided to finally go into talking about american Werewolf in london and so like i was like okay like Let's see if this movie, like, what this movie for uh, American World from Paris does for me now. And it, does, it did nothing for me. It really did absolutely nothing. Funny enough, but London had some pretty good things going on with it. So uh, that's some really valuable things going on there. So that's all I have to say about these movies. I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.